Oh, you know, an old man. I don't do those things anymore. Those things he's referring to are a long list of ugly crimes. From petty rubbish to uh, murder, arson, malicious wounding. Has he given up a life of crime? Just four days after this interview, Mark Brandon Chopper Reed was once again arrested and charged, this time with attempted murder. It happened right here in Evandale, the tiny village in Tasmania that Chopper frequents to drink at the Clarendon Hotel. It is alleged Sydney Michael Collins left the hotel with Chopper and 15 minutes later, Collins was maliciously wounded. Could Chopper have done it? Well, he is one of Australia's most notorious criminals. Chopper then demonstrated the accuracy of his marksmanship. I'm a very, very good shot. Would, you, good? Like, would you like me to show you how good a shot I am? Yeah. All right, well, I'll get my young assistant, Trent. Grab that bottle. Get over there. This place play by the hour. Once Chopper got started, there was no stopping him. You want me to have a go? Show you? Okay. Will I show you? All right, hold it up clear. Hang on, just see if the gun works first. Oh, the gun works nicely. Yep, I'm a crack shot. So how long's it taken you to be a shot like that? Oh, for most of my life. Chopper started a new life in Tasmania, primarily because it has the laxest gun laws in the country. Why does he have so many guns? He claims there are as many as 25 contracts out on his life. There's two serious ones. Uh, the rest are all jokes, don't worry about them. The contracts that the Italians put out on me, uh, they're just good for a giggle. But it's not only for reasons of self-protection that Chopper insists on surrounding himself with so much weaponry. Because I have a, a great interest in keeping the rabbit population down. I feel it is my duty to keep the rabbit population down. I know a lot of, I know a lot of human rabbits too. <laughs> While in Pentridge Prison, Chopper alleges he cut off his own ears in an attempt to be removed from H Division. You don't have ears like Mickey Mouse, that's for sure. Can you tell us what happened to your ears? You're getting a bit personal there, aren't you? <laughs> if I shot you in the kneecap, Renee, we're entering Logie territory. <laughs> <laughs> Are you you're the only journalist that's ever had a crack at my ears, you cheeky young bugger? And he was removed from H Division. To hospital. Was it to prove a point to a warden? No, no, just to prove to get out of haste division. And then everyone else thought there was something in, uh, to be gained, and and, uh, and they all started cutting off their ears. And a couple of characters cut off their, d and uh, I bailed out of the gang. When the dicky birds start hitting the pavement, you know I'm out. That's it, me. I'm gone, finished. Yet he had no problem oh, cutting off people's gotcha. toes. This was one of the tortures through which Chopper made money and a name for himself. I always thought the uh, removal of toes with a bolt cutter was rather humane. As I said to a mate of mine, Linus Patrick Driscoll, who was head of a group called the Toe Cutters in the uh, late 60s and early 70s, I thought that uh, cutting people's toes off with a bolt cutter was rather puffy. Oh, you know, I, you know, I thought it was rather effeminate. Why is that? Oh, like a blowtorch, you know? The smell of burning flesh in the air. <laughs> he claims he's never tortured or murdered an innocent person. He says there was only one group he preyed upon. Scumbags, you know, basically people I didn't like, uh, drug dealers, heroin dealers, uh, people who, who had um, earned their living through uh, the sale of uh, heroin, made a lot of money, killed a lot of people. Uh, they had no right to the money. I had no money. So bugger them. Why should I stand on the footpath with me d in my hand while these, these c Oh, I shouldn't say that, should I? While these people drive past um, in their Mercedes coupes and uh, wearing $20,000 Rolex watches and uh, making a lot of money, why should, I, why should I have nothing while all these dagos and wogs and assorted, uh, you know, third world brown types uh, make a fortune out of heroin? Ever thought of getting a job? Oh, no, no. Perish the thought. No, I, I have applied for work. I have applied for work. Yeah. So, how would you describe yourself? What is the job or trade you've been doing for the last 10 years? A garbage disposal. Mm. Garbage disposal. A sanitary engineer. <laughs> Tattoos are only part of the mutilation of Chopper's body. I got stabbed with a eight and a half inch butcher's knife here. What for? Uh, oh, well, you know, this. All sorts of things. 
twice there. Ice picked straight through the heart there. Stanley knife across there. Stanley knife across there. Stanley knife. Stanley knife. Stanley knife here. Bullet hole here. Ice pick here. Stanley knife. He's even tried to remove some of these tattoos with a blowtorch himself. The blowtorch was also his preferred instrument of torture. It's reasonably easy. He just takes a flame, a foot, <laughs> take the shoe off, give it a tickle. Love me to show you? I'd prefer if you explained it. <laughs> <laughs> in his heyday in the Melbourne criminal underworld, Chopper played Russian roulette with a loaded gun for fun and money. And when I told Chopper I thought he was a sociopath... I'm not a sociopath at all. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with me. <laughs> Mark Chopper Reed has been remanded in custody and will appear in court again on June 10 when a new chapter in his life will begin. What you've just seen is only part of his story. I'll bring you a full report on the life and crimes of Mark Chopper Reed at a later date. Now, when Renee Brack joined the team, she had no idea that one of her stories would make headlines on almost 200 television stations across the United States. Now, have a listen to how hard copy America introed her first story on Chopper Reed. You'd have to search far and wide to find the most dangerous man in America, let alone the world. But meet Chopper Reed. A woman faced him down in his hideout on an island off Australia. The real Tasmanian devil. But there's one scene the Americans didn't see, and neither did viewers in Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a slug in this gun. Now, you've got to take my word for it, but there's a slug in this gun. Well, I want one shot to my head. One shot to Renee's. Are you ready, Renee? I don't think I want to play. Are you ready? You don't want to play. Bad luck. 